boys and girls. In this video, we have two learning targets because we have a target for our reading and a target for our writing. So in reading, we are going to be making inferences to understand the story. An inference is when you take some something you see or something you read in a story, you take a piece of evidence and you add your background knowledge. You add stuff that you know from your real life. And then when you have that story piece and that piece from your life, you put them together and you make an inference. You explain something about the story that the author didn't actually come out and say. We're going to be practicing this in this lesson and in some meetings and in the future too, so you'll get lots of opportunities to work on this target. The other target we have, the writing target, is I can write a character's life story, or to use the fancy term for it, I can write a biography. A biography is the story of someone's life. So it can be the story of a real person's life and be a nonfiction book, or it can be the story of a character's life. That's what you'll be doing in this assignment. You're going to be writing as if this made up character was a real person and you're telling the truth about who they are and what they're like and how they act. The story we're going to read today is a pretty funny one. It's about a little squirrel who has a lot of worries and a lot of fears. Some of them maybe not reasonable. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. But first, let's learn some important vocabulary words, talk a little bit about making inferences, and get some directions for that writing project you're going to do at the end. Let's get started. Today you're going to be reading, or listening to, a story called Scaredy Squirrel. It's in your my book. Your learning target while you read the story is, I can make inferences to understand a story. Now, making inferences is basically like figuring something out using clues and using what you already know about the world. So in the story Scaredy Squirrel, the author doesn't tell us everything about the main character in the words. You also need to learn about him by making inferences. Inferences help you fill in the gaps about a character or about a story. So you're going to be using clues from the text plus what you already know to make inferences. There might be evidence in the pictures and you'll be using what you already know about life and the world and stuff like that. And when you put that evidence together with what you already know, you will understand the story better. We'll practice this in our meetings as well, but keep it in mind while you're listening to Scaredy Squirrel or reading it in your my book or both. Before you start reading, I also want to introduce four important vocabulary words in this story. The first one is venturing. Venturing is a verb. It's an action word or a thing you do. And if you are venturing somewhere, it means you're going somewhere that's unfamiliar or might be unsafe. For example, in this picture, they're venturing down an unfamiliar trail. Now, you might not have heard the word venturing, but you've probably heard the related word adventure. They're connected because if you're going on an adventure, you might be venturing somewhere unfamiliar. So here are some thinking questions that you can pause the video and mull over. Why might it be dangerous to go venturing down an unknown path? Or think about what are some places that you have ventured? And what did you find when you were venturing there? Take a minute and think about those things, then play the video to keep going. Another important word in this story is predictable. This one is definitely one that you've probably heard related words like predictions and stuff like that. Predictable is an adjective or a describing word. If something is predictable, it's just what you'd expect, no surprises. For example, in the picture, the equations are in a predictable pattern that helps us find the answers. 
You can check out the number pattern in those equations to see how it's predictable. Here's some thinking questions to pause the video and think about. What parts of your day are predictable? What parts go exactly as you'd expect, no surprises? And what are some other things you can think of that are predictable? This is another word you've probably heard before, emergency. An emergency is a noun because it's a thing. It's an unexpected situation that requires help or quick action to make it better. In the picture, we have a fire truck racing down the road to get to the scene of an emergency. So some thinking questions to help you get to know this word are, who are the people that help when there's an emergency? How could the weather cause an emergency? And then just how many different types of emergencies can you think of? Do a quick brainstorm and pause and play the video again when you're ready to go on. The last word I want to talk to you about from this story is consult. You may not have heard this one before. Consult is a verb. It's a thing that you do. If you consult something, you're looking at it to find information. In the picture, you can see the girl is consulting the map to find the island. She's looking at it to find information. What tool would you consult if you wanted to find out what a word means? Or what are some other tools you might consult for help, different kinds of help? All right, now it's time to read Scaredy Squirrel, see those new vocabulary words in action, and also make inferences as you read to understand the story. Remember, an inference is taking what you see or read using what you already know from real life and putting them together to understand what's going on. In this assignment, there will be a video that will be a recording of the story if you would like to listen to it while you read. The story starts on page 77 of your my book. Once you've finished reading Scaredy Squirrel, you're going to have a writing assignment. You're going to be writing a biography. Biographies are stories about someone's life. They're true nonfiction books or short, shorter stories like a couple paragraphs. And so you're going to be writing a biography of Scaredy Squirrel. Now, I know Scaredy Squirrel is an imaginary character, but you are going to write as if he were real and you were telling his life story. That's our learning target for writing. I can write about a character's life. At the top of this Google Doc, there is a chart to help you get going. You're going to need to list details from the story about Scaredy Squirrel. Now notice I wrote the word details. That means you'll need more than one idea in each section. So at least two things. More is better because more will help you write a stronger biography down at the bottom. But Two is the minimum that you need in each column because it is details, more than one. In the first column, you're going to list details from the story about Scaredy Squirrel's personality, how he feels and how he acts. What kind of a, well, squirrel is he? He's not a person, but you get the idea. In the middle column, you're going to be writing about Scaredy Squirrel's habits. Habits are the things that someone usually does. For example, you might have a habit of brushing your teeth before you go to bed. What types of things does Scaredy Squirrel usually do? What are his habits? List details from the story. In the last column, you're going to be listing Scaredy Squirrel's beliefs. What does he believe is true about the world? Remember to list examples from the story. Whew, okay, you're done with your pre-writing. Now let's get down to business actually writing your story, biography, and your life story of the character. You're going to type down here where I wrote start typing down here. But as you write your biography, here are the six things that I'm going to be looking for. 
You can't actually be done until you do all six. At the beginning, you need to introduce Scaredy Squirrel to your reader. That might be something like um, saying like, Scaredy Squirrel is a whatever kind of personality words you brainstormed type of squirrel. And then you start telling about his life. This is a tricky thing we haven't talked much about. It's not going to be too hard, but it's something that's new. You'll need to write in third person point of view. You, so what that means is you'll be using words like he, him, and his to describe Scaredy Squirrel. You're not going to use words like I or you because you are not Scaredy Squirrel. You're telling about him. So you have to use third person words, he, him, and his. Now comes the, all the stuff you did that chart for. You need to include your details about Scaredy Squirrel's personality, details about his habits, and details about his beliefs. So all that good stuff you brainstormed for the chart needs to go down here in the writing. And just in general, you'll already have, hit, have checked this box by doing the others. You need to include details from the story. Okay, so doing all that, typing it down here, and you will hit the learning target of being able to write about a character's life. That's all for now. See you in the next video.